everyone and welcome to another Costume Spotlight. This time I'll be focusing on a witchy autumn 18th century design that I finished up just in time for Halloween. This costume centers around a taft wedding coat, but also consists of a hat, skirt, and fichu, along with a half dozen foundations. For this piece I focused a lot on texture and worked hard to bring a variety of materials together cohesively. I'm really pleased with the end result and I am super excited to share it with you. Starting off with the boring stuff, socks. These are from Charlotte Rousseau, and I picked them because I thought the color complemented the ivory lace used in other parts of the costume. For shoes, I'm wearing the lovely Fraser design by American Duchess. These are reproduction shoes made out of leather and cotton. I'm a little concerned about their long-term durability, but they are very comfortable and quite visually stunning. These were a bit of a splurge for me, but I'm really pleased with them and think they add a lot to the finished costume. And I know they will pair well with lots of future projects, too. I have a full review for them on my blog, along with construction notes and pictures of this project. So definitely check that out if you're interested, I will leave a link down below. Also, I'm sorry for the wacky setup in these try-on shots. I'm going to try and find a place with more space and better lighting in the future. Next up is the chemise. This one is made from a very light striped cotton, pieced together with French seams, and hemmed by hand. This desperately needs a wash and iron, please excuse that. But this is my favorite chemise. It's so thin and fits beautifully underneath dresses and aligns with the neckline of my stays really nicely. These stays are a new addition to my foundation wardrobe and were made in two days from a self-drafted pattern. The exterior is brocade with a base of denim and cotton broadcloth lining. The binding is silk shanting and these were stiffened with plastic boning. The boning channels and assembly was done by machine, but the seams were finished and the edges bound by hand. It closes up the back with eyelets. These may not look too pretty, but they are my favorite pair of stays I've ever made. They are my only pair that has an even gap all the way down the back, which makes them way more comfortable and easy to lace. I also found spacing the eyelets further apart makes them easier to tighten, and making the straps longer puts less pressure on my shoulders. Plus they are pink, and who doesn't love pink? You probably can't tell, but this process is so much faster than it was with my previous ones. However, I still cannot tie the laces behind my back to save my life, so I'm wrapping the excess ribbon around my waist. This can damage the material over time and warp boning, so keep that in mind. The next piece is the fichu, which is a small shawl worn to fill out the neckline of a dress or make it more modest. Various styles of these existed from the mid-1600s all the way to the late 1800s. Sometimes they were a stylistic choice, worn over the garments, but in this case it's more of a replacement for an undershirt. Mine is made from cotton with two ruffles of gathered mesh lace. I picked ones with a lot of texture that felt appropriate for this piece. I left mine loose and tucked it into the riding coat later on. Then there's the bum pad, which is made from pink cotton and stuffed with quilt batting. This ties at the front and will help support petticoats and provide more volume to the rear of the skirt. My petticoat is the standard netting one I usually wear, but I had to pin it up to shorten it and it looks ridiculous. This has definitely motivated me to finally fix my shorter quilted petticoat, because this looked awful. Then there's the skirt, which was often also referred to as a petticoat in the 18th century. This was made from a brown suiting and lined with a beige suiting. The skirt features a ruffle which has dyed detailing across the hem. This was very labor intensive to do, but I really like the end result. And the effect reminds me a bit of jack-o'-lantern teeth or autumn leaves, which feels very appropriate for this piece. I used pinked strips of gathered taffeta to cover the seam, and these were sewn on in a scallop pattern. I thought this contrasted nicely with the jacket bottom edge. The waistline is gathered into a waistband made from the same material. The front is flat and the rest is densely gathered with closures on the right side. I love this skirt to pieces but I want to upgrade it in the future by adding some lace to the center of the taffeta ruffle and taking the waistband in since the skirt was a little loose and dipped down in some of the pictures. Now for the star, the riding coat. This term can be used to refer to practical riding or hunting costumes that both men and women wore in the 1700s. It can also be used to describe garments with a less functional purpose that have similar design features. Mine definitely falls into the latter category. This dress is made from striped silk taffeta and lined with the brown suiting. All the seams are boned and it closes at the front with six hooks and bars. The collar and cuffs flip outward to reveal the brown and are outlined with piping that was hand stitched on. This adds more contrast and helps exaggerate the shapes. The cuffs have ruffles that match the fichu and the only other detailing consists of 14 buttons sewn to the cuffs and down the front. The interior has been left a little raw for now, but the hem of the skirt is finished nicely by hand and the top of the skirt was gathered down with tiny quarter inch pleats before being sewn onto the bodice. 
This goes on like any jacket and it's really easy to do up since it's a little big on me. Now for my favorite part, the hat. This came together over two evenings from self-drafted patterns. The pieces are made from heavy duty interfacing with wire sewn into the edges. All the pieces are covered with brown taffeta and lined with various scraps. I used a strip of striped taffeta and a lighter scrap of silk shanting as the main trim. But I also used an ostrich feather and two fake fern leaves which really helped tie all the colors in this costume together. My favorite part is the rosette. I covered the center with pearls and stitched on a glamour spider brooch into the center. The interior stitching is pretty rough, but here you can see the shanting lining of the brim and a ruffle of taffeta that I stitched around it. This was such a fun hat to wear and make. Actually, that could be said about most of this costume. I had to rush it at times, but I really enjoyed the process and prancing around in a pumpkin patch whilst wearing it. I think my favorite part of this project, other than the hat, is how all the materials work together. The details, though minimal, are really effective in making this piece look unique. The light brown suiting with the dark brown taffeta is such a striking combo to me and helps break up the wacky striped taffeta. The little things help too, like the feather lace and pearls or the gold buckles, buttons, and the brooch. They make this a cohesive piece. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of footage of it worn. The pumpkin patch, though beautiful, had lots of people around and cars in the background. It was also a really windy day and getting the skirt to stay still for a photo was a challenge. For videos, it was almost impossible. But I hope you enjoy seeing it in action and if you want to see the photos of the finished thing along with the construction notes, definitely check out the links in the description box. That's it! Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, leaving a comment or a like would really help me out. And if you're interested, I will have links to construction notes in the description box, along with photos of the finished ensemble, and anything else that I mentioned in this video. There will also be a link to my costume spotlight playlist if you want to see more, as well as a vlog that I filmed during the construction of this dress. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to all of you very soon!